What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. So two weeks ago I made this video over here about the Audi R8 V8 prices and how they changed in the last year. And spoiler alert, especially the pre-facelifted manual script up in price. Now a ton of people among which Alex and Lee requested to see the same analysis but for the V10 prices. I always thought that the V8 was more popular, but given the amount of comments I received requesting a V10 analysis, it looks like I'm wrong. In this video we will then also have a look at the current V10 market and compare that to the market one year ago. This will namely show us if they stop depreciating and if prices are perhaps increasing. Now if you are new to the channel, this channel is all about analyzing car markets in a data-driven way. So be prepared to crunch some numbers. And as always, we start by having a look at the current market. In the graph over here, we have the model year on the horizontal axis, the price on the vertical axis, and each car is represented by a bubble. You can also see that I split the market by transmission type, as we know that this is an important price driver. So what do we have here? There are 82 cars for sale in the US at this moment, and the median price lays around $90,000. However, there is a big price difference between the manual and the automatic market. The manual market is extremely small and the prices are also a lot higher. They start around $100,000 and go then up to $140,000. The automatics you can get already from around $70,000 onwards, but the fresh examples can still go for around $120,000. Now something else to take into account here is the difference between the V10 and the V10 Plus. So let's have a look at that. You can see that the V10 Plus is quite rare. There are only 7 cars for sale. You can also see that there is some price difference, but that this is not night and day. Moreover, you can see that the ones which have a decent mileage are priced at the same level as the normal V10. Hence, it is clearly the transmission type which is key here. Now the two graphs which I just showed you show the market as of today. And that means that they are static market pictures. They don't show the price development over time. And that means that to figure out this price development over time, we need to compare those pictures to the ones of one year ago. So let's do that. And to make a proper comparison, we will split the market by the transmission type and the roof type. And we will investigate the price changes both from a model year and a mileage perspective. However, before we dive into the details, we will first have a look at the changes in the complete market. And that we will do by investigating the changes in the price distribution and the mileage distribution. And these two are now displayed over here and over here. Now if we start with the price distribution in the left top, then you can see that the prices on average decreased by around $5,000. And this of course means that on average, an Audi R8 V10 lost money. Note though that this price decrease was expected. In this video which I made one year ago, we could see that the average depreciation per year back then was around $5,000. Also note that this price decrease is statistically confirmed, meaning that it is unlikely that the decrease is a result of mere chance. There is however still something else going on with this price distribution. You can see that the right tail is longer and this means that at the top end of the market, it is likely that prices increase. But we will come back to this later. Now if we move on to the mileage distribution, then we can see that the current market has a median mileage which is 4,000 miles higher than the one a year ago. For these type of cars it is even so that the mileage increase of 4,000 miles per year is quite a lot. I have even seen some markets where the average mileage increase per year is only 2,000 miles. So to conclude on these changes, the full market moved more or less as expected from a normal car market. Mileage is increased and prices decreased, but there is more going on. We just need to have a look at the changes in the different market segments. So let's do that now and we will start with a model year perspective. Before we do that though, if you like this data driven way of analyzing car markets, please support the channel by smashing that like button. Also, if you would like to see the same type of analysis but for a different car, you can comment the name of the car down below in the comment section. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. Don't forget then to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you get actually notified when your requested analysis goes live. Now then, the graphs for the comparison from a model year perspective are now appearing on your screen. And note that these graphs only include the V10. In that way we can make a like for like comparison. Now at first, they might look a bit daunting, but there is some logic to it. So please stay with me here. You can see that we have a graph for the manual coupes, the manual spiders, the automatic coupes and the automatic spiders. Now if we start off by looking at the manuals, then you can see first of all that the market shrunk tremendously. One year ago there were 14 for sale, while today there are only 5 for sale. And unfortunately, this makes it very difficult to compare the numbers. You can then also see that the shaded areas are very large, 
indicating that there is a lot of uncertainty in these markets. Moreover, there is so much uncertainty that these depreciation lines are useless. Now, if we work with what we have, then we can see that the manual coupes are on average $30,000 more expensive, but that we can't say the same for the spiders. I will revisit these price differences in the next step when we have a look at the market from a mileage perspective. But bear in mind that due to the few number of observations, it's very difficult to attach any conclusions to this. On a positive note though, we have enough observations for the automatic market. So let's have a look at the price changes over there. We start off with the automatic coupes and I will make this graph a bit bigger so you can see what happened in the market. First, note that the orange line is below the blue line and this means that prices decrease. In fact, they decrease with an average of $5,000. And this makes sense. The blue line, so the market one year ago, namely showed that the average depreciation per year was around $4,600. Note though that this price decrease is not evenly distributed over the model years. You can see that the cars from model year 2014 and 2015 took the largest hit with respectively 11 and $6,700. And also this makes sense. They are the newest cars and the slope of the depreciation curve is the steepest here. The older cars, so the cars from the first generation, lost a lot less with an average of $2,000. And given the mileage increase, this is quite reasonable. You can see though that these cars over here are priced much lower, but that is because they have extremely high mileages. So all in all, I think that the price changes for this market segment were expected. The overall change is in line with the prediction and also the price decrease for the individual model years is very close to what was forecasted. Interestingly though, the depreciation per year didn't decrease that much, as the forecasted rate sits now at $4,000. And since this is an average number, this also means that you can expect most depreciation for the facelifted cars. Let's move on now to the automatic spiders and see what happened over there. You can see that also here, the orange line lays below the blue line. And this means that prices decreased. In fact, they decreased with an average of $7,000. But just as with the coupes, this decrease is not evenly distributed over the model years. It are especially the facelifted cars which took a big hit. The cars from model year 2014 decreased for example with $13,000. And this is quite a lot and also slightly more than predicted. Now one reason for this is that these cars over here are high mileage examples which are pushing the prices down. If we look then at the pre-facelifted cars, then the story changes. Here we can see that the cars from model year 2012 lost $2,000 and the ones from model year 2011 only $1,000. So just as with the coupes, we can see a clear flattening in the price decrease and this is then also displayed in the depreciation curve. The orange one shows a clear bottom, while this was less so in the curve one year ago. Alright, let's recap a bit now before we move on to investigate the price changes from a mileage perspective. We can namely already identify some trends. We saw that in general, the V10 prices decreased. The price decreases, however, mainly caused by the facelifted cars. The automatic pre-facelifts also showed a minor decrease in the price. But this price decrease is only very small given the price point of this market. And with that in mind, let's have a look at the same four graphs, but now from a mileage perspective. Let's start with the manuals on the left hand side. But again, let me repeat that we have very few observation points and that we need to be careful with interpreting these results. The shaded areas are very large and therefore we can't use the depreciation curves. Hence, we will only look at the individual points. For the coupes, you can see that both of the manuals which are for sale now are priced far above the ones which were for sale one year ago. So based just on these two observations, it seems to be so that prices increased. For the Spider, however, the story is different. The cars in the current market are from left to right from model year 2011, 2014 and 2011. The first and the last one are sold by dealers and the one in the middle by a private seller. And what surprised me a bit was this car over here. To me, it seems that the car is priced at the lower end of the price spectrum while well, usually dealers price their car at the upper part of the price range. Now unfortunately, there are no pictures of the car available, but based on the information what we have, I would say that this is a steal at this price point. So if you're interested in this car, head over to the website of Jaguar or Palm Beach. But note that this is not an advertisement and also not a recommendation to buy. You still need to do your own research before purchasing a car. Now then, let's move on. As I mentioned, the car in the middle is sold by a private seller and this makes it more difficult to compare the prices. The one at the top though is sold by a dealer and this price seems to be in line with the coupe market. So then, what do we make of these price changes in the manual market? Well, 
based on what we have, it seems to me that prices at least didn't decrease. It is simply impossible to conclude on these few data points that prices went up. There is not enough evidence. Now to get some more data, we can of course have a look at the auction results from Bring a Trailer. And those are now appearing on your screen. Here you can see now the time on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. And the first thing which I noticed was that it is evident that the manuals go for a premium over the automatics. These are namely the manuals and these are the automatics. Note though that this one car over here is an Artronic. Now then, if we look at the auction results from the manuals, then it indeed seems to be so that over the last two years, prices remain stable around $90,000. Also, if anything, I would say that it is more likely that we can see an increase in prices than a decrease. For example, this car over here with 12,000 miles sold for $95,000, while this manual over here went for $87,000 with only 2,000 miles. And that means that in relative terms, prices perhaps increased. This graph by the way also reveals the insensitivity of the manuals to the mileage. The most recent car which was auctioned had 29,500 miles and it went for almost the same price as these two cars over here with 12 and 13,000 miles. And that is simply amazing. Usually cars which are going up in price or are fully bottomed out are very sensitive to mileage increases. Finally then, the last thing which caught my eye, we can see that there's a huge discrepancy between the auction results and the asking prices. Take for example these two cars over here, which have a mileage of 12 and 13,000 miles. If we go back to the market with the asking prices, then we can see that the asking prices for this mileage lay between $110,000 and $140,000. I do think then also that the cars which fall at the top end of this price range are way overpriced. And with that in mind, let's quickly recap about what we saw in the manual market. Based on the asking prices and the auction results, I think it is fair to say that the prices are stable. Now, statistically, we can't really say that prices are going up. We have too few observations. Nevertheless, if we work with what we have, then I think that the prices indeed have increased slightly. Let's now go back to our four graphs and have a look at the automatic market. Here we can basically see the same as what we saw when we evaluated these graphs from a model year perspective. For both market goals that prices decreased, but this decrease is most severe for the spiders. And the reason for this is that they are a lot newer. However, for both markets, the decrease mainly took place for the low mileage cars and therefore, for the cars from the most recent model years. You can see that for the cars with a higher mileage, the price change is minimal. Now, my final observation about the automatic market is that, contrary to the manual market, the auction results are much more in line with the market asking prices. The difference lays somewhere between five and $10,000. And with that, let's wrap up and conclude. So then, we went through a lot of numbers, but what is now the final conclusion? Well, like I mentioned before, the automatic facelifted car still came down in price quite a bit, while the pre-facelifts decreased only marginally. And this is exactly in line with what we saw in the R8 V8 market. Going forward, I do then also expect the same for the V10 market as what I expect for the V8 market. And that is that the facelifted cars continue to come down in price slightly, while the pre-facelifted cars start to settle down. Now when it comes to the manuals, the market is extremely difficult to analyze. There are only a few cars for sale and this makes it impossible to apply any quantitative technique. But just eyeballing the cars and including the auction results, I think that the prices at least didn't decrease and that value-wise, they might even went up slightly. Moreover, I think that this is a likely development because it would mirror the V8 market. Over there we have more observations and we saw that prices increased with an average of $2,000. And if you want to know more about that market, then I recommend that you check out the full analysis. The link to that video is included in the description of this video. And with that we also arrived at the end of this video. Now if you enjoyed it, please remember to support the channel by smashing that like button. Also don't forget that you can comment down below with the car for which you would like to see an analysis. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. Now as always, a huge thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new analysis.